For today's video, I am working on some windows that are, they're windows, but they're not really windows. I mean, they're windows in a sense where you can see light through them and, you know, stuff like that. Um, but they don't really function. They're not set up in the way they're supposed to be set up. And, you know, and my job is going to be to make them right again gosh and that's such a subjective term what's right well i can tell you what's right in the sense of historic windows and what that is is it's putting them back in the archetypal setup you know and what that what that means is that they will be set up in the most optimal way possible okay which currently they aren't Okay. I mean, they are set up, but it's like the setup goes back in history, maybe two or 300 years um, to when these were first invented. And maybe they hadn't thought through all of the problems to solve yet. And so when they put them together, they didn't think about the next person coming in and maybe working on these things. They didn't really think about them opening and closing the way they ought to. They didn't think about them being trimmed out properly. Um, and properly, you know, is it's a combination of common sense and decorative ability, you know, structural components, you know, all that blended together to make a really nice end product, which is, you know, what makes a typical turn of the century 1920s window archetypal. Archetypal is because they've they had gone through and removed all of the complexities, right? And made them simple to work on, easy to use and install, uh, maintenance, all those things. And um, these windows that are here behind me, they are um, borrowed from a house next door or down the street or something like that. And whoever put them in did a, uh, a good job at getting them in. But what's really striking to me is that, okay, yes, they're borrowed from another job, but wasn't there any thought about the, the circumstance, the context out of which they were taken? Didn't the person want to look at and see and study how they were installed and understand why they were installed the way they were instead of perhaps reinventing the wheel. This is one of the things that I don't really understand about the way people do things now, even in you know, today's flipper economy, is it's easy enough to go next door and see how the window is really supposed to be assembled. And then you go to the house next door after that and it's assembled the same way and you start to see a, a pattern. Well, um, why don't they do that? I don't know. So anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to have to end up taking these windows apart and, um, I've got new parts milled because I don't think I'll be able to use most of what's here, but we'll see. So just kind of as a reminder as to what we have here. Okay. I mean, you can see, I mean, they've got typical old window hardware and stuff like that. They've even got a really nice, you know, lamb's tongue profile, but they are installed in a way that is not archetypal. It's, uh, I mean, it was practical, you know, at the, whoops at the time put that back up a little bit real quick um and i guess this here you can see it's really an old nice old piece of wood but so they borrowed this piece maybe from the house next door and put it in and you can see they've got these you know the weights are in there uh you can see the ropes that they used um, those are 
like the home store ropes like you get at Home Depot that stretch out. I mean, they start off the right size, but eventually they get really, really skinny and stretched out. And what will happen with the rope like that is it will roll up and it will hop over the, the pulley right there and it will get jammed in the pulley because it's not thick enough for that pulley. I've seen that several times. Um, the meeting rail, this is the meeting rail I'm pointing at to the outside sash, the top sash. It's way down beneath um, where it needs to be in relation to this meeting rail for the bottom sash. Some questions as to why that is. Uh, if I look up here, I can see a nice gap up the top. And so maybe that's one of the reasons why it's lower than needs to be. So I'm gonna take these sashes out first and do some investigating. I'll take them and take this frame apart and give me enough data from which I can make new frames, actual frames uh, for these sashes here. I've got the parts out in the van. Then, um, you know, cause, I, cause like, one of the things that you have to realize is that like this jam here, because it doesn't extend all the way to the wall, that won't work. So my new jams will extend all the way to the wall so that we can trim them out properly. Um, there's no, there's no stool here. You know, the stool goes, it, it this, this piece here is in the place of the stool. So it acts as a barrier for the sash here to, you know, for the sash to tuck down behind and create a barrier so the, you know, the, the elements can't get through. But that stool usually comes out here, travels along there and then returns into the wall. And then, you know, this casing piece here will then sit on top of the stool. So obviously this, that's not the case here. This piece here is known as the apron and it, uh, it would go under this stool. So this stool is stopping short of my apron. The apron is overlapping, that's backwards, right? So this stool is supposed to overlap the apron. Um, you know, and then the casing of course sits on top of the stool, but you know, so a person trims this thing out right um i mean you know they, they see the butt joint there okay on the other windows maybe so they do a butt joint there but they didn't pay attention to the way the stool was and that's so they did another butt joint there and a butt joint there so but then also you know to get you know to keep the windows in place they use a three-quarter inch thick piece of wood here and then overlapped it with this, this casing here. Okay, which, you know, in order, you know, so in order for me to get the sash out, you know, I've got to take, you know, the casing off, take this piece off, right? And, you know, in an archetypal setup, okay, the reason it's set up the way that it is, you know, the reason the stool goes across and then the, you know, the casing sit on top of that, the casing, you know, this casing is supposed to nail onto this jam. The casing holds the jam straight, you know, up and up and down. Okay. And then the window stop, which is what this thing is attempting to be, then covers the transition between this casing and this jam, right? And then all of that sits on the stool. Hence, that's why it's called a stool because the things sit on top of it, all right? So, and then, you know, of course the apron because the apron sits underneath, you know, like underneath like the belt line, you know, where a stool would be. So that's, that's a nice word for that apron. Um, and then another thing too, they have a, piece of wood here that's just a solid piece of wood and it's got a routered edge on it and that's their attempt 
at a back band. Well, why don't you just put a regular back band on it? You know, like all the other windows. Well, I don't know, maybe they didn't have the ability, so. All right, so I guess I gotta start taking these apart. I'm gonna take this apart and take the sash out so that I can start seeing what is gonna happen here. All right, Let's see what I gotta do, so. Check back with you later.